I'm the kind of person that needs to have something to do all the time. And the, the day goes much faster and you feel much more fulfilled if you're engaged in what you're doing. My good friend Oliver was going to full sail for recording and he told me that I should check it out. And he came up here, decided that there might be a place for me working on movie sets and that would be a way to avoid sitting in an office in a cubicle, typing on a computer all day. It became clear to me that uh, AD was gonna be a really good fit for me because they don't do one shot in a film without the AD, so I knew I would be able to see every shot of the movies that I worked on, and that appealed to me. The first step of becoming an assistant director, I needed to join the Directors Guild of America. So I did my homework, and I found out that there was a couple different avenues I could take. But the best path I found was the DGA training program, because they promised everybody they would get at least one feature. Some of my classmates got like Mission Impossible and really cool, big budget action features. So you can imagine my excitement when the phone rang and I got Fat Albert. Hey, hey, hey. Wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but I got to meet Bill Cosby and work with him on that film. And I met um, the second AD who went on to become huge first AD and he's hired me on some really big, cool stuff. So you never know, uh, you know, even if it's not exactly the project you want to work on, who you're going to meet that can be really influential in your career. My friend Greg was working on Pirates of the Caribbean and he called me and said, we need an additional AD. My friend Dave was the first AD, the guy from Fat Albert who was the second AD. The next morning I showed up on Pirates of the Caribbean, not really sure exactly what I was going in for. Dave is there standing with, at the storyboards with Gore Verbinski and the director. And so Dave says, Larry, Gore, Gore, Larry. Gore's gonna tell you what he wants you to do. So I go to the storyboards and Gore's looking at the storyboard and there's a flag like in a turret of the fortress flapping with some smoke going by. And he's like, you know, this is the shot I want. So you're gonna take this camera and this camera crew and the special effects guys up there with the smoke and the fan. So go get the shot, you'll record it on this clamshell and then bring it back to me and I'll tell you if it's any good. So I rushed back over there and you know, got the shot, brought it back to Gore and he's like, all right, that's good. So then we, he crosses that one off of the storyboards. Then Gore shows me the next storyboard and it's a picture of a noose with the sun, you know, just coming behind it. Now I have to get all these elements together. So I walk up to the key grip of Pirates of the Caribbean. And I'm like, uh, sir, I need a C-stand with a noose on it. He's like, I'm lighting the main shot. Do you need that or do we need this? I was like, well, you know, kind of, this is what Gore wants. He's like, all right, all right. Bring the clamshell over to Gore and he approves it. Months later, get the invitation for the cast and crew screening at the Capitan Theater in LA, which is the Disney theater. And they have it all decked out, you know, with pirate stuff and sit down and the curtains open up and the movie starts. And the very first shot of the movie is the noose with the sun coming through. Cut to the very second shot of the movie is the flag flapping the turret with the smoke going by. So pretty much the first two shots of Pirates of the Caribbean 3 were, you know, wrangled by me. I'm not gonna say I directed them, but I supervised them. So that was really cool. Looking back, I wasn't sure that was my goal at the time, but looking back, my goal was to just get on the sets of movies that I like to watch. And so been able to do that and it's incredible and you know, I love it.